came out, it's like you know, he's training again. He's doing what he what what he knows, not what he loves, right. but what he knows. That's what's going to make him some money. That's going to put um, food on his table. So it's like I look at old time fighters and say, what made them stay in boxing so long? The upcoming bout between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has just seen another contributor, and it is boxing legend Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis did not only react to the uneven, controversial fixture of two opponents who happened to be of different generations, but once he came to terms with the state of things, he gave his prediction as well. And his prediction is possibly something you never saw coming. Regardless, he had his reasons, statistics, and analysis to back his pick. Let's get right in. Dubby? Yeah. Just well, you know, what is it doing there? Yes, yeah, nothing else. Enough weights. Yeah, so. Fuck dudes. <laughs> Ever since its announcement, the matchup between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson has seen numerous professional boxers publicly share their opinions and predictions on the outcome of the match. While many hold on to the vigor and strength of Tyson to see him through in the matchup, others believe the age advantage Jake Paul has over him will be the main decision of the winner. Aside from these two factors, many have little statistical evidence to back up their claims, owing to the fact that Mike Tyson's last professional bout was in 2005, about 19 years ago, against Kevin McBride. Though many supporters believe Tyson's last few matches before retirement weren't the perfect yardstick to measure his abilities, as he seemed to have lost the passions and intensity that once characterized his person. First time Tyson actually met me, you know, he was a nice guy, really nice guy. First day in the gym, Bell went, he came across and he was trying to kill me. Jake Paul also, little can only be said about him, as majority of his opponents are older fighters or non-boxers. The only matches that gave professionals a slight insight into his abilities were his loss to Tommy Fury and his consecutive first round knockout victories against Ryan Borland. As a result, many have deemed the match a very open one, with both fighters having a chance, and the winner will surely be the one who takes his chances better. Hence, both fighters have equal chances, and the winner is the one who makes the most use of his chances. Now adding to this long list of predictors is boxing legend Lennox Lewis. On hearing about the matchup, Lennox Lewis expressed his shock, saying, That's crazy! Mike Tyson returns to the ring against a young guy. That's unbelievable. But anyone who knows Mike Tyson knows he's got so much in him. I've been so surprised since I heard about it. No one can deny Tyson has it, but the only concern is if it's still there. The last time I watched him fight against Roy Jones Jr. and he looked good. But even that's a long time ago. Four years now. He continued in the same line of thought, adding, If he finds a way to get himself back, the young guy would have a bad night. But that's the big question. If Tyson will find himself or will show you as a weak, aged, and helpless boxer that we never knew him to be. Lennox Lewis was then questioned if he had seen Mike Tyson's training footage or if he's just indifferent about them, and his answer was quite expected. Yes, I've seen them, and I gave him even more respect for it. The problem is just that training sessions are so much different from real matches, he said. He highlighted an important factor in training that never gets into the ring. In training, you're mainly at your best. You do your training without the effect of the opponent's punches. No matter how great you punch, getting punches weakens you as well. So you should consider that he'd get punches in the ring and that'll affect his efforts so much. He's too old to get too many punches. He's more fragile than he used to be. Any punch to his head is three times more dangerous. His training is impressive, but it's right to consider that during the match, he won't be giving out only these punches. He'll be receiving them too. Truly. There are some insights only experienced boxers can give, no matter how trivial they seem. This insight from Lennox Lewis is one that has been largely overlooked by many who have only expressed their excitement for Iron Mike Tyson, without considering other factors. Lennox Lewis was then asked in his thoughts about Jake Paul. His response was quite balanced. It was a blunt truth. I won't say he's not taking his boxing seriously, but he's more concerned about the money. That's the problem. Money is a natural product of becoming a champion and fighting well, but he's more concerned about the financial deals than about the wins. No champion is a champion without making sacrifices, 
Sometimes the sacrifice is to fight with less gains, and if you're good at it, you'll get to the top and get the best rewards. He then continued on Jake Paul saying, if I've got advice for him, it's that he should build a name before the money. He's so after the money that he has no name in boxing. Check all the rankings and you'll be shocked that a boxer with nine wins and just one defeat has no ranking in boxing. That means he's non-existent. One thing I feel is that he's misleading many with his goals. Some think he wants to be a world champion and that's a lie. He only wants to make some money off boxing. A world champion doesn't beat about the bush. He goes for what he wants. He also spoke about Tyson being involved in the matchup. And though he found no fault in Tyson fighting, he felt Jake Paul looked so unserious to have suggested such a matchup. Tyson has won everything. He's good to try himself out. I don't know much about the rules, but I hope it's safe for Tyson. I blame Jake Paul for accepting such a matchup. It reveals some unseriousness and thoughtlessness. There's no excuse that makes fighting Tyson justifiable. Talking about the rules, there are still some details about the fight, which is being called the biggest fight of the 21st century, that are still very much unknown. But both boxers want it to be a professional bout. The rules have now been confirmed and most of them are the same as the ones from Tyson's match with Jones Jr. One key difference in the upcoming fight is the weight of the gloves. They will be wearing 16 ounce boxing gloves, not the usual 10 ounce ones used in professional fights. The rounds will also be shorter, lasting two minutes instead of three, and there won't be any official judges at ringside to score the fight, which means there is only one way to win. Either Paul or Tyson will have to knock the other man out to have their arm raised in victory. Moving on, Lennox Lewis added, Tyson didn't fight old men in his prime. Jake Paul should go after his mates. If he wants to box a heavyweight and prove some point, he should take on Fury, AJ Wilder, and even Francis. But if it's lightweight he wants, there's a lot of guys there too. He should stop holding charity matches. You know, I did my Muhammad Ali thing, obviously stayed away from his power, but the first day was really hectic. And then the last day is, I got actually the better of him the last day. Finally, Lennox Lewis was asked in the interview to make his prediction. In response, he said, I think Tyson has his passion restored, and passion is everything. I see him winning through a knockout. Paul is too unserious to have a good career, so it'd be nice for Tyson to end it once and for all. That'd be very okay. Also on the rules, Jake Paul has adamantly denied headgear will be worn when he gets into the boxing ring with Mike Tyson. But other aspects of the fight set for July 20th remain unclear and potentially a big disappointment for those expecting a traditional boxing match. Those rules such as the use of 16 ounce gloves, the absence of judges and a two minute duration for each round would be in effect if the fight is classified as an exhibition rather than a sanctioned pro fight, said Telemange, communications manager for the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations, TDLR. The decision, which is pending, will be made by TDLR Interim Executive Director Brian E. Francis with the input and advice of the TDLR combative sports staff, according to Mange. She also told USA Today Sports that an exhibition fight in Texas calls for the heavier boxing gloves, shorter rounds, and no judges. The fight promoter, Holden Boxing LLC, has requested to have an event on July 20th, according to Mange. But Mange said by email, we have not received any proposed fight cards and thus have no details about what they are planning. All bouts are subject to review and approval by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Promoters must submit their final cards 21 days before the fight, according to Mange. It's pretty common for a promoter to request a date several months out, but not immediately provide the proposed card, she said. They want to be sure that they've secured the date with us, since we'll have to make sure we have appropriate staffing available for any event. Also, a promoter can request an exhibition or a sanctioned pro bout, and it is expected that Holden Boxing seeks a sanctioned pro fight. On this issue and after publication of the story, Mange said, the promoter will need to submit proposed cards before we determine whether a particular contest would be considered as an exhibition or a professional fight, or how a proposed exhibition might be structured. Fighters must undergo the necessary medical tests, and combatants over the age of 36 are required to submit favorable results from an electroencephalogram EEG, and an electrocardiogram EKG, Mange said. An EEG is used to evaluate brain disorders and an EKG is used to detect heart problems. We can also request additional testing if we think it's appropriate, Mange said. 
In 2020, Tyson fought Roy Jones Jr. in an eight-round exhibition in Los Angeles after the California State Athletic Commission ruled out a sanctioned pro fight and instead gave an exhibition fight. I thought an exhibition was appropriate, said Andy Foster, executive director of the commission, who cited the age and activity of the boxers as factors. As at that time, Tyson had not fought professionally since 2005. Jones had last fought professionally in 2018 and eight times in the previous three years. The exhibition rules called for two-minute rounds, typically used for women's bouts, for a bout held at Crypto.com Arena, then known as the Staples Center. I'm not happy at all. That's for women. Why are we doing two-minute rounds? Jones said before the fight against Tyson. Tyson also had a similar stance. He noted two-minute rounds are used in women's bouts. But in referring to the California State Athletic Commission, Tyson also said, I'm sure they have their reasons for doing it. The rules called for the fighters to use 12-ounce gloves rather than 10-ounce gloves, and no official judges were used. There were no knockdowns, and the bout was scored a draw by three celebrity judges. The two-minute rounds would favor Tyson because he wouldn't have to expend as much energy, according to Kathy Duva, a longtime boxing promoter who in 2019 was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. The legs are always the first to go. The less time on those legs, the better, she said of aging fighters. Also, Duva said she believed Paul would benefit from the 16-ounce gloves, which are typically used in training and believed to have less force on impact than 10-ounce gloves do. The heavier gloves could neutralize Tyson's signature power punches, Duva said. Although she added, you can still knock somebody out with the torque that you generate if you hit them on the chin the right way. Cameron Davies, a boxing promoter from San Antonio, said he's spoken to a key member of the Texas combatant sports staff and is 99% certain the Tyson-Paul fight will be classified as an exhibition. Davies said Tyson, by virtue of experience and power, would overwhelm Paul in a sanctioned pro fight. All I've been told is the combative sports staff have to be able to maintain the safety of the fighters, Davies said. He also added, I promise you they can strip my promoter's and manager's license if I'm wrong. There's no way in hell they will ever make this a sanctioned fight. The Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations rules state, Combative sports promoters must strictly adhere to the rules and regulations concerning the combative sports industry in Texas, which has the most comprehensive set of industry safety measures in the United States today. Adolfo Martinez, a boxing promoter from Laredo, Texas, who's in his 15th year as the CEO of AAA Promotions, said he agreed that safety is a priority with the combative sports staff and doesn't think a sanctioned pro fight should be approved, but unlike Davies, Martinez said he predicted that Paul's youth and strength could create safety issues for Tyson. Furthermore, two experts on concussions say Tyson could be more susceptible to a concussion because of his boxing history, which includes 56 fights and two losses by knockout. I think the things that a person might be concerned about in any individual case is one, what damage to the brain has been accumulated so far through their lifetime, particularly a former fighter, said Charles Burnick, a neurologist with the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health. Also, Stephen Broglio, director of the, the Concussion Center and Neurotrauma Research at the University of Michigan said, once you've had one injury, you're more likely to have a second, and once you've had a second, you're more likely to have a third type of thing. Both of the researchers also agreed that two-minute rounds would favor Tyson, but neither said exhibition rules should be in place. I would leave it up to the commission to make the choice as to whether or not Tyson is at such great risk that it is not safe for him to fight in a competition and it needs to be an exhibition. Without knowing the details of everything in that file or in that application, there's a way for me to really judge," Broglio said. If the due diligence is done before the fight, Burnick said, the risk of brain injury probably is not a big deal. I just don't know if there's enough evidence to say, all right, in general, this should never happen. It's one of these things where it becomes a judgment call, he said of the fight. Knowing that the fight would likely be an exhibition bout, Lennox Lewis, who defeated Mike Tyson to retain his world championship title, would feel more at peace with Mike Tyson's safety. Lennox Lewis vs. Mike Tyson, billed as Lewis Tyson is on, was a heavyweight professional boxing match that took place on June 8, 2002 at the Pyramid Arena in Memphis, Tennessee. The defending unified WBC, IBF, IBO, 
And the ring champion Lennox Lewis defeated former undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson by knockout in the eighth round. Prior to the event, Lewis was awarded the Ring Magazine heavyweight title, which had been vacant since the late 1980s and was last held by Tyson. The early moments of the fight provided arguably the most evenly fought display of back and forth action between Tyson and Lewis as they started by jabbing away. Just before 30 seconds had elapsed, Tyson leaned forward with a left jab at Lewis, then lunged towards his midsection, landing a right and left combination of body blows before Lewis could manage to steer him backward with three effectively landed uppercuts of his own. As they subsequently traded body shots, Tyson ended the initial sequence by missing on a wild left hook. As the middle stages of the round came about, Lewis began to clinch and grab hold of Tyson as a strategy to fend off his repeated attempts to draw near for body attacks, keeping him at bay. But with just under a minute remaining in the round, Tyson connected with a left hook to Lewis's jaw, catching him off guard. Lewis stumbled then recovered by once again clinching and approaching Tyson and pushing him back into the ropes while landing another jab. Mike Tyson came out on top of the inaugural round. Both fighters began jabbing at one another before Cotton warned Lewis twice for holding. Voilà. On voit pas parce le... que parce que faiblir, faiblir. Mais mais il oh. sait qu'un animal blessé comme Tyson peut être encore plus dangereux. La mobilité pour l'instant de Lennox et Whisky. Lewis landed a number of effective punches on Tyson as he tried to approach, including several powerful uppercuts that kept Tyson staggering backwards. As the third round opened, Lewis continued jabbing away. Later in the round, Tyson went on to headbutt Lewis before connecting with a left hook, but Lewis managed to cut Tyson above his right eye later in the round. Again, Tyson rushed out in the round's beginning moments, but Lewis then landed two strong jabs before landing a big right. With 10 seconds left in the round, Lewis landed a couple of punches on Tyson who went down. Oh, il faut y retourner, hein. C'est clair. Il faut y retourner. Le résultat, vous le championnat du monde, parce qu'on avait très peur de ce combat. Mais on sent, euh, je l'ai presque grandi, bon, Mike. Referee Eddie Cotton ruled it a slip and deducted a point from Lewis for pushing Tyson down. Tyson's face had then started to swell. Cotton stopped the fight and talked to Lewis again in the fifth round about pushing. As the round went on, a visibly weakened Tyson began throwing fewer and fewer punches while struggling to land on most of his attempts. Lewis stayed in control by mostly connecting on jabs. With just over a minute left in the round, Tyson was able to land a couple of shots which had created swelling just below Lewis's left eye. But by the conclusion of the round, Tyson had already sustained lacerations above both his eyes. Combat poids lourd. Eddie Cotton. Qui le reprime. C'est limite tout ça. Voilà, bouger comme ça se désaccélère. Ouais, avec ses adversaires. Il y a aussi euh, maintenant. Euh... In the seventh round, Lewis put Tyson off balance upon landing a crushing right hook. Lewis once more was overpowering and taking the round with what was little resistance at that point continuing on as he had shown without relent through most of the fight, landing 31 punches in comparison to only four landed for Tyson. With 47 seconds left to the bell, Tyson was hit with a heavy right across from Lewis, knocking him to the canvas and down for the second time in the round. As Tyson lay on his back, he was counted out by the referee at the 225 mark as he made no real effort to get back up and continue fighting. Lennox Lewis was declared the winner by knockout, the loss against Tyson was one of Tyson's six losses that all happened towards the end of his career and after his return from prison. Oh, il faut y retourner, hein. C'est clair. Il faut y retourner. Le résultat, vous le championnat du monde, parce qu'on avait très peur de ce combat. Mais on sent, euh, je vais presque... The fight was so intense that both fighters had a brawl before the match. Tyson went on stage at the Hudson Theater and starred in the direction of where Lewis was to appear. As soon as Lewis appeared, Tyson quickly walked toward him and appeared to be about to assault Lewis. One of Lewis's bodyguards attempted to block Tyson's access to Lewis before Tyson threw a left hook in the bodyguard's direction. The two boxers rolled on the floor with personnel from both camps getting involved. Following the brawl, Tyson came to the edge of the podium, grabbed his crotch, and started shouting expletives at someone at the crowd who was later guessed to be either Lewis's mother or a female photographer. Then he overheard freelance journalist Mark Malinowski suggesting that he should be in a straitjacket, which prompted him to issue another profanity-laden tirade, this time directed at Malinowski. He repeatedly referred to the reporter as a punk white boy and a faggot, 
and punctuated his oration by vowing to fuck Malinowski till you love me. The brawl at the press conference for this fight was named the Ring Magazine Event of the Year for 2002. Lennox Lewis has given his take, but July 20th provides the final answer. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, actions and events in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this.